Hello, welcome to the Soccer Robot tutorial. In this video, we will be giving you a step-by-step -step procedural outlook into the physical assembly of the robot, followed by how to get through the programming part. The entire box consists of four smaller boxes. Let's first look at what is in each box. Box 1 Box 2 Box 3 And Box 4 Behold Beyonder Soccer Robot Kit Now, let's take a look inside each box. In Box 1 you will find a screwdriver, a chassis, a caster wheel, a set of wheels, spacers, and nuts and bolts. Moving on to box two, you will find bio motors, a motor driver, screw shields, and wires. Making our way to box number three, you will find an Arduino Uno, a battery holder, and a joystick. And onto our last box, box number four, you will find a battery charger, batteries, and a battery mount. Now that we've seen all the components, let's get to the exciting part, the actual robot assembly. Now taking a look at our chassis, we have the front side, and we have the back side. Now, assembling the spacers, make sure to take four 15 millimeter spacers along with four M36 millimeter bolts. Now, we need to assemble a spacer here as well as here. So to do this, we need to take two M3 bolts and insert it on either sides. So ideally you should flip it and insert it in. And then once that is done, flip it again and take a spacer and rotate it in. And voila, your first spacer is placed. Now to do the same, take another M3 6mm bolt, flip the chassis, and insert it. Once this is done, flip it again, and take a spacer, and rotate it in. Now, going to our front side, we are going to do the same thing, except it's a little different here. Uh, start, like before, taking two M3 bolts and securing it from behind. Make sure here, however, to hold it securely as there are no threads. So keeping it secure in place, you're now going to flip it over and tighten the spacers. Although here, you might not want to tighten it completely because when the motor driver is put, a distance should be fixed before tightening. You're good to go. Continuing on our second step, fixing the caster wheel. So we are now going to fix the caster wheel among these two holes. So make sure to take another two M3 bolts and insert it here. With the help of your screwdriver, fasten it tightly. And now repeat the same on the other hole.
you now have successfully attached the caster wheel. Now opening our box 2, we have Bio Motors. These are special motors because they have gears attached to the motors inside. And these white things we have here, they are called shafts. When you power the motor with sufficient voltage and current, these shafts rotate and they will be connected further to the wheels. Now we are going to fix the motors to the chassis. So to do this, we have two long 20 mm nut and bolt. And these are the respective holes of the motors we are going to attach the chassis to. So let's get started. We are now going to take two bolts and attach it to these respective holes on the chassis. So insert it there and then take your motor and as discussed, attach it to the respective holes. Make sure that the shaft on the motor is pointing outside. Now once it's mounted, we are going to take two nuts and tightly fasten it through the holes on the motor. Then using our screwdriver, we will tighten the bolted nut once again. Now we are going to do the same thing with another two bolts. So again, we are going to fasten it in the holes of the chassis, take our motor and insert it into the respective holes. And do remember to project the shaft outside once again. Once you've fastened it inside, we are once again going to take two nuts and attach it to the rear end of the motor. Once this is done, as before, we are going to use our screwdriver and fasten the bolted nut. So this is how the assembled piece should look right now. By pulling the wires out, you will now have a chassis with the motors perfectly placed. Next step is fun and easy, you guessed it. We are now going to mount the wheels. So the frame of our wheel is not a perfect circle, which is similar to the shaft we have. So this is a D type shaft. So it is important to make sure that you match the shape to the frame of the inside of the wheel. Once you've got that figured, you align it and gently press it. Repeat the same for the next wheel and you have successfully mounted both of them. Next up, we are going to fix the motor driver to the two pillared spacers here. So let's first take the motor driver from the box. This component helps the robot to drive the motor efficiently. So coming back to our M3 bolts, we're going to require two and we are going to fix it to the chassis with the holes you can see here, this way. So. Again, we're coming back to the front side of our chassis and the spaces we left there. We finally get to work out the distance that we talked about prior. So once that is figured out, we are going to take the M3 bolts, insert it through the holes, attach it to the spacers, 
and then with the help of our screwdriver, we are finally going to fasten it. And there you have it. Perfect. We now have the motor driver in place and the BO motors connected to the chassis. Our next step is to take the wires from the BO motors and separate it so that there are two on each side. We are now going to place these wires into the output pins of the motor drivers. Keep in mind that the wires from the right BO motor will be inserted into the right output pins of the motor driver. And similarly for the left hand side. So to set it in, let's first unscrew the fastened screws on the output pins and poke the holes with the screwdriver so that the wires go through easily. Once that's done, go on to insert the first wire. Make sure to do it gently so that nothing is damaged. You may now fasten the screw upon the output pin again. Proceed to do the same with the other wire. Insert it gently and fasten the screw. So now we're going to repeat the same process with the left BO motor. So as before, we're going to unscrew the top of the output pins. And we're going to put the wires in the respective holes. Make sure again to put it in gently. And you might want to poke again with the screwdriver to make sure that it is easily applicable. Once that's done, put the wire inside, screw the top as before. You are now done. There are a few more connections left. So to do this, we need to take the wires from box two. Here you will see that you have one red wire, a black wire, and what we will be starting with, a four pin connector. So we will be using all of these wires and be connecting them to the motor driver but first we will start with the 4 pin connector wire. So we need to connect this to the logic input pins on the motor driver. And we need to poke it through. So make sure that while you do this you have a little support on the bottom. You can do this by just putting your finger there. So now that you've completed with that connection, we will be using the red and black wires, which are actually very important connections. These will actually be inserted through this given connector, which supplies the voltage to the motor driver. So there are three connections on the connector, but we will actually only be using two. So the connection here is the 12 volt pin, the ground pin, and the 5 volt pin. But like I said, we will be using just the 12 volt pin and the ground pin. So first, connect the red wire through the 12 volt pin. In order to do that, you must unscrew the first screw making sure that there is enough room here to insert the wire. You might want to poke the screwdriver again so that you have enough room. 
Once inserted, tighten it back. And now the positive connection to the motor driver has been done. Similarly, the black wire should go within the ground pin. So again, you must unscrew the top to make sure that the connection can be established easily. Use the screwdriver to poke in the hole and then gently insert the wire. Once that has been done successfully, screw the top again. And there you have it, we are now done with the motor driver connections. With this being completed, we are proceeding to the next step where we mount the controller board onto these pillared spacers here. First, we need to take the controller board from box three. So this box here, as seen before, has quite a few things in it, but we will only be needing the controller board. So the controller board has four holes, as you can see, and these two holes over here are what will be attached to the two spacers here. Now to do this, first we need to move the wires out of the way. Once that's done, place the controller board accurately so that its holes are directly on top of the spacers. When you figure that out, proceed to get two M3 six millimeter bolts and begin to screw them in each side using the screwdriver. Now, before completely tightening in one side, you might want to put the bolt on the other side so that you don't face any issue in terms of distance. Once you've worked that out, you can tightly fasten both bolts. Once this is done, the controller board has now been fixed. Moving on, it's time to connect the motor driver with the Arduino Uno controller board. So at this point, you have the four pin wire connector and these two wires over here pointing out. At this step, we will be connecting it to the controller board along with some other connections. So in order to do this, we will need the screw shields from box 2. These screw shields actually have pins at the bottom of them, which will be inserted in the holes of the controller board. Now you can see that these pins are actually labeled as VN, GND, and 5 volt. These labels are at the top of the screw shield as well. Match the correct pins on top of the Arduino's black holes and fasten it. Now, take the other screw shield with the labels RX, TX, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, taking this, and making sure that the green connector is projected outside, match the labels to those as the Arduinos. Then put the pins in. Perfect. On this screw shield, there are the connections of V in and G in D. So taking this out, the red wire needs to be connected to the V in and the black to the G and D pin. Now again, to do this, we must loosen the screws on the top. So do that on both sides. Once this is done, make sure to poke the holes again with the screwdriver to make sure that there's enough room to insert the wires. 
Then take the red wire, plug it into the VIN and screw the top. Then take the black wire and plug it into the GND pin. And once again, tighten the screw on top. Now place it back on the Arduino like before. So at this point we have connected the power connections to the motor driver on the Arduino. It's time to connect these signal pins to the Arduino controller board so that the motor driver receives instructions from the microcontroller which is then used to rotate the wheels. For that, the screw shield needs to be removed temporarily. When looking from the back side of the chassis, the two wires from the right side need to be plugged into pins 2 and 3, while the other two wires on the left side into pin 9 and 10. Once this is done, this is how the overview of the connections should look. You may now plug the screw shield back into the respective holes of the Arduino. So here we have it, we are completed. The only thing left now is the controller component. So this is where the joystick from box 3 is needed. The joystick is used to control the movements of the robot. Upon closer inspection of the joystick, we can see that there are 5 wires coming out, which essentially need to be connected to the main controller board to allow us to start controlling the robot. Again, the appropriate pins matter with these connections, so keep that in mind. We need to know each respective pin before we carry on. The pin on the very leftmost side is the ground pin. This is then followed by the 5V pin. So let's do the connection for the first two pins as of now. Make sure that you identify the color of the wire coming from these two pins to make the connection process easy for you. Moving forward, these connections are to be made to the screw shield on the back side of the chassis. So plug in your first wire to the respective ground pin and your second to the 5V allocated hole. To do this, you can remove the screw shield so that your connections can be done easily. Then, as usual, loosen the screws on top of the pins with the use of your screwdriver. Once this is done, poke the holes with the screwdriver to allow for the ease of the wires. Now take your first wire, insert it into the ground pin, and tighten the screw on top. Now for the 5V pin, take your second wire, insert it. and fasten the screw on top. Now we have three wires left. How this works is that from the left, you're going to plug it into A0, A1 and A2 pins respectively. So once again, loosen the screws. Insert the wires from left to right, so that's A0, A1, and A2. Then, as usual, tighten the screws on top. So 
here, we're good to go. Now we can put the screw shield back into the Arduino rack. Of course, make sure that it's the correct pins to what it is being inserted into. Great! We're nearing the finish line now with just one last step left in terms of assembly. Now that the joystick is ready, the only thing left with the physical assembly is the battery connection. In box 3, you will find the battery connector. This is a 2 cell battery holder to which you will find double sided tape on the back. This needs to be connected to the robot. Essentially, you need to be placing the battery on the back of the chassis at this point. Now, because of the bolts and nuts that we fixed before on the motors, the space is a little tight to do so. So make sure to loosen the wires a little to enable more space to place the battery connector. Now, make sure to peel off the tape. And then proceed to stick it in. You're going to have to push it in so that it is attached properly. Once that's done, the black cable from the connector is to be plugged into the jack on the Arduino. With this, it will get power from the battery and now everything will start working in sync. We're now almost ready, only needing the battery at this point, which you will find in the fourth box. This is the battery mount and here are the lithium iron cell batteries which we are going to be connecting now. So start by obviously removing the wrapper. Roll out the batteries, proceed to take one battery and check that the positive and negative sides match with the holder. Insert it and push it in. Now, before you plug in the second battery, make sure the jack is disconnected. This is done as a part of safety. Now you can flip the chassis over again and put in the second battery. Now, before powering up completely, check all your connections to prevent from a short circuit. If required, rewind this video and look over the parts needed. Once that's done, connect the jack and you should see two LEDs on the Arduino and one on the motor driver, indicating that both have been connected to the battery. Now. Let us quickly fix this mount to the chassis. In order to fix this, there are two M4 bolts. Before you fix the mount, remember to disconnect the battery by taking out the jack, as it's good practice to do so. Now, the mount is positioned this way, so the caster wheel needs to be removed. So you can quickly unscrew that and remove it for the time being. Place the mount so that the top gap and bottom gap align with the bolt holes on the chassis. Then insert the M4 bolts at the bottom and screw them in using your screwdriver. Once that's done, 
you can reassemble the caster wheel on top of it and screw in your M3 screws again. Now with this done, the batteries are secured. With that, congratulations are due for the assembly is done. Now it's time to program our robot. As you can see, the Arduino has a metal USB connector. In our box three, if you remember, a cable came with the Arduino. Here is where we will be making use of it. Once you take it out, you will see that it has a USB at either side. Connect this one to the Arduino and the other to your laptop. Immediately, you can see that the laptop is powering the Arduino now because of the LEDs. You can open the IDE and start programming now. If you do not have Arduino IDE, follow these steps. To download Arduino onto your system, open your browser and search for Arduino IDE download. Click on the very first link to get redirected and then proceed with the relevant download and click on the downloading button. Once it's downloaded, open the file and run the installation. When the setup is completed, open the application. This is where you will be pasting the code. To retrieve the code, access the GitHub link in the description of this video. Once you click the link, you will see this interface. Proceed to click on code file. You will now get access to the entire code that will run the soccer robot. Copy it, go back to the IDE, Delete the existing code and paste this code there. Now, unplug and plug the USB in your laptop again. Click on the drop down menu at the top. This is where you will select the board and port. Enter Arduino Uno and click it. Press OK. Now, Go to the upload button and click it so that the code can be compiled and uploaded to the microcontroller. And there you have it. Enjoy your very own soccer robot with the ball provided.